Welcome to Mimiki TV. I'm your host, Mimiki Kuni. Get ready to break through barriers, fuel your faith, pursue your purpose, and market your message so you can impact the marketplace for God. Hi everyone, it's Mimika Cooney and welcome to another edition of our live Mimika TV. I'm so excited to be able to do it this way because um, I just love the live format. Don't you, Nikki? I love it. (laughs) Well, let me introduce my lovely guest today. Um, Nikki and I have had the great opportunity to meet in person because we live in the same city and we are part of the same group. We are authors and speakers, and we have cool accents. So she's from Britain, and I have a South African-British twang. So you will uh, really have some up for a treat today. So let me introduce Nikki to you. So Nikki is a Brit living in the USA and a rectal, yes, rectal cancer survivor. She's a pastor's wife, tea drinker, and teller of terrible jokes. As a speaker and author of Breathe Again, How to Live Well When Life Falls Apart. She's also all about meeting you where you where life's not fair and you helping you discover that with God, life doesn't have to be pain free to be full, then to live with it. You can find more info on her online, but we are going to chat a little bit more about what her topic is today, which is something I love. It is really you don't ha- you don't have to really have an excuse to stop living today. So we know in the situation we're in um, as of now, everybody's still embracing this work from home in quarantine, which is totally fine for you and I, hey, Nikki, because this is something we're used to. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Nothing's changed apart from my house has got busier. <laughs> yeah, and don't you find that there's constantly dishes and then everyone's eating the food, like we are doing more grocery shopping than we have done in a long time because we have five adults in our house, college age kids, and a nine-year-old, so I'm like, oh, please. <laughs> Exactly. So I have barricaded myself uh, and kept the dogs out. So hopefully we can ha- have an uninterrupted conversation. But hey, that's life, right? We embrace the quirks, the fun, even, you know, I think perfection is just a thing of the past. I think a lot of people are really um, getting used to just embracing where we're at. So talking of which, we are live today. So if you have just joined us, make sure to click on your, um, if you're on a, on a phone or if you're on a computer, help us spread the word. So if you are on, you would have got a little notification if you follow the page and you'll see that we have gone live. So if you could go ahead and click that and cl- click to share the live feed, it'll have a little button that says share. Um, let me see if I can get this to work on my computer. Uh, no, hold on. <clears throat> just. Okay, so I have, you see, I have myself in double time. So what I'm going to do is click the little button at the bottom that says share, and you can share it as a post, or you can share it to your friends. That way, we can invite more people to join in the party. So that is good. So let's get into this conversation, because this is something um, I think is very relevant for where we are now, and even just generally in the world itself, is your title that you want to talk about today is to stop waiting for life to get better. So... Dive in and tell us a little bit about why this is an intriguing topic for you. Well, this idea of not waiting for life to get better, about how life doesn't have to be pain-free to be full. You know, we can enjoy life and live abundantly and find connection and intimacy and um, all the good stuff in life, even in the midst of hard times. And that came about through my cancer journey. So... For those listening who who haven't heard my story, I lost my mom to cancer and then I lost my sister to cancer. And then just six weeks later, I was diagnosed. And mine wasn't lung cancer like theirs. Mine was rectal cancer, like you said. And, you know, I, I was determined to survive. I'm a Brit with a stiff and perfectly waxed upper lip and I can keep calm and carry on. So I kind of hunkered down and I battened down the hatches and I was determined to survive. But Mamika, you know... I had surgery and radiation and chemo and I had an ostomy bag where I could walk, talk and poop in church all at the same time. And then, you know, I had (laughs) more chemo and I had a port where they kind of plugged in my chemo. And um, it got to the point where surviving was all I was doing. And um, eventually I found people in an online cancer support group who called themselves cancer thrivers, not cancer survivors. And there was part of me that was like, ooh, I want that. I want what they have. It was as if they were saying, I know life stinks right now. I don't know how much life I've got left, but I'm jolly well going to grab hold of everything life has to offer for me right in the middle of it. And and it just dawned on me that when 
you know, Jesus said, I've come that you might have life and life in all its fullness. But he didn't say, but you've got to wait for it until the storms that I also said would come are gone and are, you know, the seas are calm again. And I was like, no, it's possible to thrive, not just survive, no matter what is going on. And so um, that's what I love to talk about and speak about. And really, it's as if, you know, we're saying, stop waiting, you know, because life, you know, if you've got a terminal illness, or you've got chronic pain, or depression, or you've lost a loved one, you know, things get better, but they don't ever change, you know, your circumstances might not change. And I think there's so much more we can grab hold of in life, right in the midst of it without waiting. Exactly. And I think that's a, a very apt thing, a way to look at things. It's like kind of flipping the script. Like we can have this negative thought process and, oh, I feel so bad. Oh, it feels terrible. Either whether it's chronic illness or in some cases you've uh, you've lost a job or your business is shut down and we're not acknowledging and putting that down that that's not important or that's not real. I mean, we definitely, uh, we feel for you, but what we want to do is try to help pull you out of that and just start to think a little bigger. Like how can we push ourselves out of our comfort zone and say, and I think would you say, in this situation, it's almost like you go through a season of grief. Like, of course, for you, it was grief. You had your, you had to lose your, you know, you lost your mom and your sister. But almost like grieving for what was in order for us to go through the process so we can come to that stage of acceptance to what is the new way of living. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I'm definitely not saying, you know, fake it till you make it. I'm not saying deny that life stinks. What I'm saying is, I think for me and for many people, when we think of an abundant life, a good life, we think glossy, happy, skippy, healthy, wealthy, perfect, you know, because that's what we're shown a million times on social media and on TV and stuff. And, and so I think we're, what we're hoping for and aiming for is unobtainable. And then uh, to your point, I think it's really important to say no life does stink. And I need to grieve to grow. I need to embrace the journey, the good, the bad, the ugly, and and be vulnerable in it. But it's only when I do those things that I can then find the the, the joy in it. Exactly. And even like I've, I've read it, I mean, I love Dr. Caroline Lee. She's a fellow South African neuroscientist. And if you haven't read, yet read her books, definitely go and find it because she really helps in in, in explaining how you can, you know, reform the pathways in our brain that even though we might have thought of a certain way, we have habits that, you know, determine our, our, our lifestyle. When we get shaken up and life comes at us and things change, there is a way of us retraining our brain. Mm-hmm. Um, but wouldn't you say, like you said, it's coming to the stage of, you know, what's the worst that it can happen? Like you have to face the fact that you could die. Yeah. And then when you face the worst possibility, what did you find in that moment when you kind of embraced that moment and thought, hmm, where do I go from here? Yeah, well, I think it was like, well, you know, what does God have for me here and now, you know, and in the time I've got left, possibly, you know, what what does he have for me? And it's not just a kind of what external message does he want me to share with people, but how does he want to connect with me? How does he want to comfort me? How does he want me to, um, you know, be with my family and things like that? And so, um, you know, in my book, um, here, we've talked about this before, but um, Breathe Again, How to Live Well When Life Falls Apart, it's super practical because there, I, I needed things to practically help me through um, you know, I knew I needed to trust God, but like I was mad at him, <laughs> you know, so it's like, show me how to trust him. I knew I needed to uh, find community, but I didn't want community. It was scary. I didn't want to go there. So, um, yeah, there are practical things that we can do to help us find that that life that we want. Even when we are at, at rock bottom, these are practical steps that we can take. Definitely. I think that's the thing is the first step is acknowledgement. Okay, this is where I'm at. You know, I'm always like to say, can you control it? Then do what you can. If you can't, just do like Elsa and let it go because there's seriously nothing. <laughs> now, and especially in the way the world is, we are. We, a lot of people feel completely out of control, but I'm excited for the opportunities. And I want people to see that it doesn't, you know, what goes down must come up. There's always a way. I mean, this is society itself and how, you know, history repeats itself might seem bad, but things do come up, but I think it's a great way to position ourselves to think, 
what, do, as you said, what does God want for me from here? That even though this is kind of shaking the boat a little, yeah. maybe woken me up from just being in the status quo and going with the flow. So what are some practical steps then you, you could advise people to take? Well, I mean, I, I outline the seven tools in my book. And the first one is choose brave. And um, I think there's a myth that we're either brave or we're not. And, um, you know, I really believe that um, choosing brave is a, a, an intentional step towards, you know, an abundant life, towards the full life, towards what God has for us. Um, but it has to be intentional, but it doesn't have to be big. You know, we think it's some big all singing, all dancing thing. But hey, getting up in the morning when you've got depression, that's a brave choice you know, um, and having a hard conversation with someone. That's a brave choice. So choose brave, um, trust God. And, um, you know, because he's got really good credentials, but, you know, I wouldn't trust a plumber, would you, without checking him out or online and making sure he'll turn up on time and do what he says. So I found that checking out God's credentials and learning uh, a practical process of trusting him really helped me. Um, and then finding community. And like I said, I had my people around me, you know, my few close friends, my family. And I was like, I do not want to go near the cancer community. It sounds terrible, Mika, but I think I was afraid. I was afraid of getting close to people who were more likely than the general population to pop their clogs and, and die. And I was like, I've had enough grief. I can't deal with that. I also was kind of a bit arrogant. I was like, I don't need them. You know, I've got my family, I've got my doctor, and I've got Google. What else could I need? You know, and so there were all these mixed things, but it's not until we step out into a community that gets us you know, that can offer empathy and not just sympathy, that we really um, uh, find what we're, what we're searching for. You know, our fact, we, need, we need to step into the people around us, but we also need to step out to those people. And then when we're there, we need to, to be vulnerable. You know, as I like to say, even stiff, stiff upper lips need chapstick. <laughs> That's a cute way of putting it. About, yeah, I think that's about, you know, being vulnerable with those around us, but being vulnerable with God. I mean, it's, it's very easy to feel we can't come to him, that we're too messed up, that we're not good enough, that he wouldn't like what we're really thinking and feeling and those kind of things. Um, and then I talk about embracing the journey. And that's what we were talking about, of acknowledging where we're at, grieving to grow. The only way out is through all those kind of things. Um, and then practicing gratitude, this whole flipping the script. You know, it's not, I've got to go to chemo. It's, I get to go to chemo. There are drugs that are going to fight this for me and prolong my life. Um, and then, believe it or not, reach out. I think reaching out to other people um, really fuels us and fills us in a way um, that we don't expect. I thought when I had cancer at first, I was like, my world has shattered. I can't be the glue in somebody else's life. And then I realized that, you know, it's not a time to start a worldwide ministry or take in my, you know, neighbor's mother-in-law or something like that. But it is a, an opportunity to act with small acts of kindness and reaching out to other people. And I found that they filled me up and um, brought me more joy and connection than I could have ever possibly imagined. So those are the kind of the practical things that I outline in my book. And, you know, I'm preaching to myself. These are the things I'm having to remind myself as we, you know, we're home alone and there's all sorts of things going on in the world. I'm like, okay, what do I need to preach myself today? <laughs> what tool do I need to grab out of my toolbox today? I love that how it's, you know, it is. It's like you have to tell yourself. And this is the thing. It's for us authors. When we write books, it's because we're learning the process. Yeah. We're not yeah. the, the authority on that, even though author means authority. We've had to walk it out. Like oftentimes, like I'll go through something in my life. And, and that's the thing is you have to re re reimagine it and just go through it again and just repeat the process. So even though I have my books, I look back and go, oh, speak to, you know, yeah. take my own medicine sometimes. But it's important because we have to have that growth mindset. 
that even though we are where we are, we don't have to be stuck. We can think of what the opportunities are to help us grow. Because, of course, you know, just like an elastic band, when you stretch yourself, it feels painful. Well, like I know as a dancer, having to learn the splits is like, <sighs> yeah. But once you, you stretch it and it gets easier and easier and easier, it's kind of like a muscle. So I love that. Let me pop in the comments real quick. So I've got to say thanks to Colleen and Melanie for joining us live. We'd love to hear comments. If there's anything that Nikki has said to you that has resonated, definitely pop in the comments and, you know, let us know what you're thinking, any aha moments, you know, the, us being on live, we're here to uh, um, answer your questions, especially in this situation. Now, and I know, you know, for you having gone through cancer yourself, it's a really hard journey. And for me, I'm on the other side, but similar journey like we had mentioned uh, you and I talked about this before my sister had been diagnosed mm. um, last year with breast cancer so even though I wasn't physically going through it there was a grieving process that I had to go yeah. through too as a family member who's watching somebody you love suffer and you know the whole question is why God why and why she was yet she's only 37 she was like why is this happening you know that's kind of flips your whole reality and and what you mentioned I think is important is the gratitude part I had to realize Yes, I'm grateful we live in the 21st century with medication that saves lives. That even though she had to go through chemo, which was awful, and for me as well, the guilt of not being there to help her was awful because she lives in the UK and I live here in the US, not being able to support her. So even though we might not be physically going through something ourselves, just the fact is, you know, we have family members or we have a, a child or a parent going through depression. That's how do we enable ourselves not to get sucked into that but to pull ourselves out so I love how you've mentioned um you know those seven steps so just show everybody your book cover again it's, it's totally fabulous I love how the <laughs> breathe go. again it's and it's definitely on <laughs> it is so cute yeah we'll have all the links as well um after we hop off live on the replay you'll be able to yeah. um, get the show notes and it'll link you to all of um, Nikki's info um so which is totally wonderful so tell everybody what's a, the best place they can find and connect with you online well, um, I'm always hanging out on my website, nikkihardy.com, and that's where people can download all sorts of resources. Um, you know, I have a ton of gifts in the book that they can download at nikkihardy.com, Breathe Again Gifts. Um, there's prayers and um, a Thriver Manifesto and a love letter written um, like it's from God to us all in scripture. That's really cool. There's an audio version of that. And on my website, there's um, also an audio of um, how to handle anything life throws at you. So there's all sorts of resources and things for people to download there. And I'm always hanging around on Instagram and on Facebook at um, Nikki.hardy on Instagram and Nikki Hardy author on Facebook. And I'd love to meet people. I am a people person and I'm going squirrely cold up at home so, <laughs> like, ah, hello. like I'm a hugger and I'm like oh do you know I'm a people's yeah. person with my people this elbow stuff I was like oh really it's like so annoying yeah but well, we'll get through this and you know this this too shall pass which is you know always good news yeah. to know that and for everyone who's listening on the audio Nikki is spelled N-I-K-I so it's a little oh, you know you. a little different so I would say thanks to Colleen and Melanie and, and Nita for joining us live I always love to be able to connect especially if you're on the phone or you're on an app or you're listening um um, what I love about these is that, you know, we have that interactivity. You can always go back and watch uh, the replay and definitely connect with Nikki online. She's got some great resources, totally fabulous, lovely personality. You always got something funny to say, which always cracks me up. But once this quarantine is done, we are definitely going for a cup of tea somewhere. Oh, uh, we coffee. are, girlfriend. <laughs> be like, oh, we love that British tea. So for my, you know, South African and British family, we know when we say a hot cup of tea, it really solves a lot of the woes, you know, nice yeah, and hot so and sweet. Exactly. So there you go. But as I say, thanks everyone for joining us live today. Um, and make sure to click on the link below the video um, for the show notes so you can connect with Nikki. We'll list all her books and social media platforms so you can connect and make and let her know that you saw her or heard her on the Mamika TV yeah. podcast. We love to connect with that. our guests. Exactly. Well, thanks again, everyone. I appreciate you joining us. Um, until next time. Bye.